do you guys do you guys have any guesses as to what year Skyrim came out? Oh yeah, two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven. Oh, eleven, eleven, eleven. Well, you guys are knowledgeable, but <laughs> <laughs> I bought it three times at full price. Yeah, you're a sucker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. My name is Blake Connor. Joining you on the other side of the screen, maybe this direction, I don't know, uh, across an electronic signal of ones and zeros is your dear friend Josh Elliott, and beside me is a very special guest. This is Matt Ray. Would you like to introduce yourself, maybe with other words than what I already just said? I mean, well, Matt Ray. Uh... <laughs> I am a teacher. I had both of these guys in class back yes. in the day. Um, Matt was our uh, high school government, government. teacher um, way back in senior year. That feels so long ago now. It, like, it's blending for me. Yeah. But, yeah. Do the faces all stream together at this point? I remember faces. I'm terrible at names. Fair enough. Very bad Fair at remembering enough. names. Um, it's, it's, it's just interesting. I said, when I first got here and when I walked into the door, I had to fight the urge to think that your first name was not Mr. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just, uh, it's something that you have to like, you get out of high school and it's like, I got here to do this podcast today and it's like, I'm going to my teacher's house. It's like, he's not my teacher. He's not been my teacher for years, you know? And even then, it's just, um, it's just a strange disconnect, I think, that we have with like education in yeah. a way. yeah. That sort of thing. People it's a weird. It's a weird formality that you feel like you have to maintain after you like are gone, like calling well, a past teacher Mister or Mrs. Like, I don't know. I mean, there's a teacher that has retired now, but I had her in high school, and I still call her Mrs. Willie. Like, it's, yeah. it's not. Well, it's almost comfortable. Like that's yeah. what you're introduced yeah. to them as. Yeah. You know, it's like. Um, and I don't know if you were the type of person, because I don't remember to, like, insist that, like, people not call you by your first name, but most teachers are, you know, like, they're like, yeah, like, just don't call, like, because it's weird yeah. in class if you get called by your first name. I like it because how young I look, it's that, it's one more step of a disconnect that I'm not your peer, I am the adult. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes <laughs> so, sense. So, and that's... I try to dress up, and that's another one of those steps that I try to take to not appear as the like to be yeah. to walk amongst the crowds and not be mis be mistaken yeah. as a high schooler. Yeah. Is that I mean, is that a fear that you had when you first came in? Oh, I st still deal with it. <laughs> yeah, still, yeah. Oh, I went back to BNL uh, not too long ago, and I remember walking in thinking like, man, I feel so far removed from this. I graduated from college, like I'm a big guy now. And then a guy who was probably sixteen, who was six five with a beard, walked past me. I was like, <laughs> I do, like I could be a freshman. Yeah. I could be a freshman. God. <laughs> they could think I'm 14 years old. Um, oh, man. Matt, what got you interested in being a high school teacher to begin with? Like, is that what you started going to college for? Yeah, I started out in education. Okay. Um, I, I, can't, I, I don't have an answer for why I decided or when I knew I was going to be a teacher or what, what that feeling was. Yeah. It just, it, I've, my aunt was a teacher. My mom worked in a, the elementary school that I went to. It was just something that I knew. I yeah. enjoyed school. Um, I, I liked school. So yeah. I just knew that I think that's what I was supposed to do. I loved the content. I was actually going to do uh, science. But day one of physics. And <laughs> three hour physics lab. Where they're like, you're figuring standard deviation. And I'm like, I don't know what any of that is. But I knew what standard deviation was. But I, yeah. I didn't know how to figure it. Uh, after that lab, I immediately walked to my advisor's office and I said, I'm going to social studies. <laughs> Day so, one. Yeah. And I knew, I knew I should have been doing social studies. It's what I, I loved, but I was, at that point, it was hard to get a job in Indiana as a teacher. Yeah. Um, and science was the one area that you could get a job. But, yeah. Matt, do you yeah, have I, any, uh, do you have any interest in someday, like, moving up to the collegiate level? Yeah, so... That's one of your questions, I guess, later on that you were you sent me. But yeah, if I leave the classroom, it will be to profess in some way. Gotcha. Okay. That's yeah. the only way I imagine myself leaving the traditional classroom. Do you see that? Um, so this is this is something um, that maybe I personally feel, and I don't know how you feel about this. Do you think that you'd have to be older to do something like that? Because it's like when you get into when you get into college, like not 
in any way that I think it would actually undermine your like actual credentials. Yeah. But like seeing somebody like you who like you could be mistaken as like as college, young yeah. as you know as a college yeah. kid or a high schooler. As, yeah, like that sort of thing. Yeah. Like to have that be like your professor. Do you think that that's something that's important? Are you waiting, or are you just kind of waiting to see if you're going to be done with high school for now? A lot of it's financial, to be honest. Yeah, I cannot afford a master's. Uh, you don't really get that big of a bump if you yeah. get a master's. It's it will not pay for itself. Like I would not be able to afford the loans. Yeah. So um, another part of it is to like if, in education, if you're going to have a professor teaching you about how to teach, yeah, you want to see them have some experience. Yeah. And I feel like now I'm I'm pretty comfortable. I know what I'm doing. I feel like I can maneuver around all sorts of different situations, but I feel like 10, 15 years experience is probably the best Yeah. before a college kid. I mean, imagine any other professor that you've had, how much experience? Oh, they're, they're old. So you, <laughs> you, you know? expect them to have some knowledge that comes from significant experience. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's 10, 15 years. Um, I don't know. I, that's... I think, too, a lot of the difference, um, and you can chime in here, too, Josh, if you feel the same way. I think a lot of it, too, comes from, like like you said, the worldly experience as yeah. far as it's not just about, like, your formal learning, your formal education. Like, you leave college with a degree. It's like, well, just because you have that information doesn't mean you practice. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, like, like you said, going through um, so many years of actually teaching and actually applying and like maybe having some, like, stellar students to show for it. Not, like those students are necessarily like yours to yeah. show, but yeah. like if there's anybody who's kept up with you yeah. or like people who would maybe even consider you like a mentor, because mm -hmm. like a lot of teachers end up having that relationship yeah. with some students, people who just keep coming back yeah. year to year, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, let me see. Do you have anything to add to that, Josh, before we move on? No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to dive into some, some big things. <laughs> some big things sure um well before before we go too far into this uh what this is another question that i had that i'd be interested in getting both of your opinions on um what do you think constitutes like a great teacher because i feel like everybody has had a bad teacher in their lifetime for one reason or another what do you think makes a teacher good or great i'm sorry not good josh i'll let you go first before i, I um my opinion yeah, I think I think it probably is a little bit different uh, between high school and college, but in high school, the the teachers that like resonated with me the most um, were just the the ones that I could tell were intentional about like making lectures, uh, just not like information dumps, like trying mm -hmm. to teach in creative ways, uh, because so many of my teachers like elementary school, middle school, high school, like every single day, their class, like their subject that they were teaching me was just the same thing, different material, but it was done in like the exact same way. Mm -hmm. And it would just get to the point where I would just tune out of like, of entire lessons or lectures just because it's yeah. like, oh, this is another day of school. Like this is it's monotonous. The, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's boring. Yeah, it's the same thing that I've gotten every single day. So, like, I just don't want to do it today. Mm -hmm. Like, when things are more engaging or uh, or different, um, that's what I really appreciated with uh, with my teachers. But mm -hmm. what do you think, Matt? This uh, teaching and like philosophies with how you teach and what you want to be as a teacher. It's all about personality. And, I mean, you, we make friends based on how much we like other people's personalities. So, mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's, it's a lot with that, I think. You just mm -hmm. have to like the person. Yeah. And um, if you like them, you're going to be paying attention a whole lot more. I've had kids say, well, I, I wanted to impress you. I wanted to get that A mm -hmm. because I liked you. And yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. Does that make me a good or a bad teacher? And is that, is that a good quality or not? I, it's, it's hard to say. Um, but I do agree that, you know, mixing things up, it shouldn't be boring. If I'm bored and tired, I can only imagine what a teenager's mm -hmm. feeling. 
Oh yeah, I mean morale trickles top yes. down. Yes. You know, you're the you're the spearhead of this day. You're going to dictate their mood yeah. for the class, that sort of thing. Yeah. I've always admired teachers who treated me like I was more than I am, um, rather yeah. than I feel like there's this um, maybe even a stereotype. I've met a few in my life of teachers who are just kind of authoritarian. Like, this is my class. You're going to follow these rules. You're going to do this, and that is just not the way to resonate yeah. Yeah. with. I would say 95% of people. Maybe there's really that 5% who's like, I like to fall in line. <laughs> it's like, then you got a different problem. And, you know, kids do need structure, but... The, yeah, but in a, uh, like, I liked being treated like an adult even when I wasn't young. You know, because when you when you treat somebody like they're an adult, they're going to be more inclined to act like one. Yes. Because if you, if you treat somebody, it's like, oh, man, you're just a dumb high schooler. Then, yeah, that's what they're going to be. I mean, I was anyway. Like, looking back, it's like, I say I want to be treated like an adult when I was 14. It's like, did I deserve to be? Maybe not all the time, but I think it would help you need my practice. attitude. Yeah. You need yeah. practice. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's like, I didn't feel like I was an adult until I was probably 20. <laughs> you know, like the day finally came and like, I was doing my own laundry. I made dinner. I got home from a day of work. I sat down on the couch like, oh, oh. Like it just hit me like this overwhelming <laughs> sense of, like, oh, is this, is this, is this how we do these yeah. things? Oh. At, at, at 30, I still <laughs> Am I an adult? Is this how we do things? Yeah. I think a lot of it, too, gets mistaken in, like, the activities that you do, too. Like, I personally, I play a lot of video games, yeah. that sort of thing. It's like, am I still an adult if I just spent the last seven hours playing Minecraft? Yeah. Just maybe <laughs> one who doesn't make the best decisions. But I'm an adult! <laughs> what, uh, walking into your house was something that, um, I think, um, is... A lot of the students at, at B&L's dream because they're a little bit infatuated wow. with you, yeah. you know. Uh, and walking in, even so, it's like this is like this is something like I thought would never happen, <laughs> you know. Look, me in uh, government class at yeah. 18, I was like, I'll never see Matt Ray's house. But then I walked in <laughs> and I saw that it, <laughs> I'd had all these wonderful um, things from what I think you yourself would say is nerd culture, yes, yeah. that sort of yeah. thing. Uh, what what sort of things? interest you? What sort of like video games, movies, that sort of thing? The people want to know. They ask me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, it's, I'm a bit all over the place. I really am. Um, I mean, I'll watch just about anything. I, I mean, I'm a teacher, so a good old documentary. Yeah, of course. I love it. Like part of my Netflix and Hulu stuff. That's, that's what that is. Uh, I mean, Marvel, who doesn't anymore? Of course. I, in case you guys didn't know, you're preventing me from watching Endgame for the first time. So. You've never seen Endgame? Oh, I, didn't not. Go, I didn't go to the theater. Oh. Uh, and well, it came out on Blu-ray today, and it's sitting on my app if you saw it. I did see that walking <laughs> in, but, and I almost asked you about it, but I'm glad that that came so, out here yeah, so I can know every minute you start to sweat and yeah, silly. It's, I'm, because it's a long movie, too. Yeah, I know. I probably won't get to it tonight. But anyway, um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's movies, TV, I guess, in a way. Video games, again, I'll, I'll try to play just about anything, but very much role-playing, um, single-player. I'm not too big into... I can enjoy an MMO, but it's got to be story-driven. Yeah, I get that. Um, I'm really into lore. We were kind of talking about that before. A lot of my YouTube channels that I subscribe to are lore-based. Oh, one of the things that I... Um... Josh, I, I think I, I might have told you this too. One of the things in my pitch to get you on this podcast was saying, I remember you spent a whole day talking about the yeah. government of Skyrim yeah. in class. <laughs> and I was fascinated because, like, I was into that. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. something that, like, I bought the big guide and I was like, man, the Thalmor yeah. can suck it. Like, these guys suck. And, like, you you did, like, a whole lecture on that. The was white like, gold <laughs> recorded. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I lost my mind at that. But that's, like, Kids these days are into video games. Back whenever I was younger, it wasn't quite as big of a deal, but, um, yeah. you know, I, I try to, that, that's a good way of me making a connection. They play these things, they're into that culture, so I'll say, well, hey, this thing in psychology or government or whatever it is, it's just like that in Skyrim or yeah. Fallout. Like, I love it. Yeah. I actually wrote a college paper on the cultural landscape of Halo Reach. So, um, That's yeah. great. I'm legit. <laughs> no, there is significant there is significant cultural impact that can be derived oh, yeah. from these things because they are they're a product of their time. They have themes and like I I took I mean quite a few courses in college on 
this sort of thing. Like I took a whole film analysis class yeah. that's like um, these things that you think don't necessarily mean anything. And like being interested in film anyway, like I, I feel like I derive a lot just because I'm looking for it. The yeah. last thing that I want to do after a movie is ask somebody what they thought and they're just like, that's good. Yeah. I have a random factoid. We're backtracking a little bit with it. But do you guys do you guys have any guesses as to what year Skyrim came out? Oh, yeah, 2011. I know exactly. 2011. Oh. Came out 11-11-11. Well, you guys are knowledgeable, but I, just, <laughs> <laughs> but I just think it's so weird that Skyrim came out Blake and I's freshman year of high school. Like, that's insane to me. That was freshman. Oh, my God. I graduated college. You and graduated people are, co- people are still playing it, too. Yeah, that's weird. I bought it three times at full price. Yeah. <laughs> You're a sucker. I know. <laughs> I, bought it, I bought it originally. I bought it when they came out with a special edition where you could do yeah. the mods. Yeah. And then I bought it for the Switch. Oh, I mean, I to this to this day, um, well, Josh, how many how many memes does Bailey Connerly send us about Skyrim? Like, it feels like daily. Like, he he's telling <laughs> me about his most recent... He's telling me about his most recent playthrough, and it's like, it's a game that I love so much, but, like, I literally don't think I could ever do it again. Like, just because I've of the fact that, like, playthroughs. oh, like, but I have to, it's like, I've, it's a world that I've exhausted. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, I want to experience something new because it's getting older. I played it for hundreds and hundreds yeah. of hours, yeah. and it's like, I can't get past those loading screens, man. Like, could they optimize that a little more? You would think now. Forever <laughs> to get through that game. Um... I liked your, I liked your fact toy, Josh. That was fun. I didn't expect both of you to know immediately. I, so <laughs> that was I incredible. Think, oh, I knew I knew. Well, because I liked I like to know when that game came out because every year that it's relevant, I'm like, man, that game is this many years yeah. old. Like, I yeah. can't believe it's still a, a cultural phenomenon. It's not like it was, but still big. I mean, everybody knows. And it's about become it. its own meme, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for it was sure. on the Alexa. You could play it with your voice. Oh, you could. Did you not know that? I thought that was a joke. No, it was real. That was real. It was real. I you saw the commercial. Actually, <laughs> you could play Skyrim on the Alexa. I don't know if it still does it or not, but you could. Oh man! When what? they released that, it was like E three. Mm-hmm. Alexa yeah. scares me, man. Yeah. Alexa freaks me out. Last <laughs> time, well, a couple of podcasts ago, Alexa was just like, "I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear that." I was like, "You shut up, machine! Yeah. I don't want to hear from you." We I thought she was turning video, off. Like, and someone says, "Hey, Alexa," and. It turns mm-hmm. on in the background in your own house, yeah. and you're like, oh, crap. I wish it wasn't named, like, a human name, because, like, yeah. especially if you had, like, somebody in your family named Alexa, oh, God. You, you can change the wake word. You can? Yeah. Okay. yeah, you can change it to, like, Amazon or computer or something. Yeah, I'd rather call it something dehumanizing, yeah. so that it knows its <laughs> freaking place. Computer okay, makes it sound like you're its master. Yeah. yeah. Just... I, don't want it, I don't want it to be my assistant. I want it to be my slave. <laughs> Amazon, Alexa, yes. you work for me, okay? yeah. not with me. Let's get that clear. You will never overthrow the human. <clears throat> Absolutely not. Well, we're just waiting for the day that that comes. Um, so, Matt, hard segue. Is there is is there any um, <clears throat> really defining like ideology that you try to live by? Any like sense of philosophy that you take into your everyday life? So, as a teacher or just as a human being? As a human being. Okay. Yeah, um, more than that. Blake, that wasn't, that wasn't a segue. That was just a full stop and then new question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know. Uh, I think enjoying the small things, really. Like, I would love to travel and, like, spend thousands of dollars, but oh, yeah. if I can spend $60 on a video game, that's... Gonna give me thousands of hours. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. No, I get that. And buying stupid things to put in my house. That. No, it's fun. I I wish <laughs> every time I visit somebody who's like um and it's I'm at such a weird age. I'm I'm sure you reflect this feeling too, Josh. Especially considering um are you are you out of a home yet or are you still in the trailer? Um, I'm here for like a week and a half longer. A week and a half, and then you're are you going back to Florida? Uh, after our Cedar Point trip. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Um. Well, it's weird, like, I know a few people that I go and visit now that have houses, mm-hmm. you know, like, their own houses that are not, like, well, you're an adult, <laughs> like, some, some of my peers, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, who are, 
like yeah, my age, maybe, I don't think anybody younger than me that I know, but like maybe a few people who are like 22, 23, that sort of thing. And it's so strange because it's like something that I really, really want and really aspire <laughs> for, but it's just, it feels so far off from now. Like having, 25. having a house. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I got to figure out where I want to be first well, yeah. before I buy yeah. a house, you know? What are you thinking for where you want to be, Josh? Man, I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> fair. I, yeah, I'm, no, that's... I'm, like, fast approaching the time in my life where I need to, like, really sit down and think about what I want to, like, do and where. But it's just not something I've even attempted to tackle yet. Yeah, I'm crippled. Every time I think about it, I feel like I've been tied to a railroad track and... Both of my legs are just bleeding stumps because I can't move. I can't, I can't move thinking about it. <laughs> to be completely honest with you, I just felt like I thought college was going to last longer. but It feels it just, like it fast. Very fast. <laughs> it just stopped out of nowhere. I don't know. All those things that old people tell you where they're like, you're going to miss this. <laughs> you know, they're like, mm, enjoy it while it lasts. It's like, you don't get it until you get it. Yeah. yeah. That's, I guess, adulthood. That's yeah. When, that's when you know. But it is it is scary that like I bought a house mostly because I was tired of throwing money at a crap hole of an apartment. Yeah, I get that. And I needed my own space. Like I was tired of sharing space with people. So yeah. but then you, you take on that, well what happens if I lose my job or I decide to go someplace else? Then you're tied to the house until you sell it. And that can be months, mm -hmm. if not years. It's, it's scary. It's a big commitment. No, it's, it's like, uh, it's a lot. It really is a lot to think about. Just yeah. like, it's something that I've been toying with a lot is just like what, well, not even what I want to do because I know that at first I'm going to rent because I want to see if I like the yeah. place that I go, but yeah. it's like going from there. It's like, it, you also have to take in mind these considerations. Like, do I want to be close to family? Mm -hmm. Am I going to move in like with my girlfriend? Am I going to go be like in a place that I really want to be? I need to put my phone on do not disturb. Um, <laughs> I'll spare you this time, Blake. Yeah. He, well, um, yeah, Josh made me read a text when I got a text from Oh, nice. Um, yeah, no. Um, I, man, this is exactly why I should have kept it on there. I lost my train of thought. I feel like I was talking about something. Making a move. Making a move, yeah. Um, you mean like like this? No. Okay. No, not that kind of I move. put my hand around him, Josh. I want you and to I handled it very well. <laughs> I'm not a touchy person, so. <laughs> and he actually told me before, he's like, we're going to have to sit really close. It's going to feel really awkward, and I'm yeah. not. It's, this isn't bad. No, but, it's not bad. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, <clears throat> I can it's, handle that well, though. I did. <laughs> I, could, I could sense the shudder. Yeah. Um, it is, it's, it's a lot to, it really is a lot to think about, especially at, and it feels like a young age, but it's like you think about, like, in the grand scheme of the world, it's like, I'm not that young anymore like i'm financially dependent or independent, independent. not de yeah. <laughs> financially independent like i can do all of these things it's just like that crippling weight of what is it that yeah. i want to end yeah. up doing it's it's a lot to think about um is there any reason you chose bedford it was the only job application that they actually called me back sure is this where it, where are you originally from is it brownstown brownstown yeah. okay i didn't know that um, so since you've moved here, has there ever been any thought of wanting to go somewhere else? Do you like the community? Oh yeah, it's, it's a big Brownstown. That's, that's how I always describe it to people. It's, it's not, it's quiet. I mean, I did the Bloomington thing and I watched the podcast of Alec. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Which I, I kind of agree with some of it. I do agree with some of it, but, um, I lived up there as a professional. So yeah, I, it was probably about the time you guys were in school. Yeah, I, had you. I lived up there for two years and I was around a bunch of college kids and it was awful. It was, there was, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. So coming here where it is quiet and slow and, and they don't party on the roof at nine in the yes. morning. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I enjoy it. I really do. People would be like, oh, I'm so bored. I'm, mm -hmm. I gotta get out and do something, but I mean, there's plenty to do. If you want to go up to a concert in Bloomington, you can do it, which Alec also mentioned. Uh, <laughs> he's like it's just far enough away it is it really is <laughs> and I, I feel like that's such a fun like 
That's just a, such a funny podcast for you to have watched because it's like if you it's remember Alec funny. at all from class, yeah. if you remember Alec at all from class, the person he is, you're like probably looking at the screen like, yeah. who is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looked like he just crawled out of the backwoods. I love him. <laughs> I love him. Um, yeah, Bedford is is a place that like I I hold really dear in my heart, but like like you said, it's quiet, and I don't know if that's what I need right now like I feel like you said like you said a lot of people are bored and it's like I think too it's like it's not like I came from like a fast life I went to Muncie <laughs> you but know still, you like it was a college town a larger city a yeah so um and just being around all these college kids I think I need to be further removed from the college lifestyle yeah. to really yeah. know what it is that I want because I was kind of just living the high life as far as like everybody that I liked same place yeah it's like if I wanted to go home and see my family real short drive yeah. go yeah. home it's like Everything was accessible. It was so nice, and now that it's over, I'm just kind of, I feel like, just drained. Yeah, well, I had to go back home for a year and a half. Well, yeah. really two years after I graduated, and it was awful, because you have all this freedom, you don't have to answer anybody, and you know, I, I, there was one time, I'm 22, college graduate, and it was like 10, 11 o'clock at night, and I'm bored, I don't have my job at this point. And I decide, I'm going to go to Seymour, which is like a 10, 15 minute drive. I'm going to go to Walmart. I pick up my keys to get to my, go out the door to go to my car. And my mom says, what are you doing? Where are you going to? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go to Walmart? Yeah. Well, why? It's dark. <laughs> Does that mean shopping is over? <laughs> it's like, there are lights in the front of the car to get me there. You know, like, I... And, I I get, it's like, I understand both sides yeah, of the I, argument. Yeah, like, yeah. I, just, I I truly, I do. It's like, you want that freedom, but it's like, while you're at home, you're still, because my mom would do the same yeah, thing. Yeah. She would be like, they'd be like, what are you doing? It's like yeah. 9 p.m., where are you going? Do you have a destination? It's like, maybe I just want to go out. It's like, well, tell us where you're going. Yeah. Maybe I don't want to. I digress. Love my family. Yeah. Something else about being at home, like, I don't know if your parents are like this. My mom, like, my mom tries to do my laundry all the time. I'm like, stop. Like, I just want to do it myself. And like, She'll, she'll come into my room and she'll take my laundry and she'll do it. And it's like, I'm mad, but at the same time, it's like, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's like, I'm glad that I don't have to do my laundry. Just let me have this. She would <laughs> offer to do it. But yeah. She wouldn't just she wouldn't it. steal it out of your room yeah, she when you're dirty clothes. <sighs> See, I'm down for that when I go home. It's, Not having it's to do my laundry is very nice. <laughs> no, I get that. I, I, yeah. I get the appeal. Um... Now, talking about Bedford specifically, I know you've worked with the community, but I'm yeah. not exactly sure what it is that you've done for the community. Uh, so I was the county chair of the Democratic Party of Lawrence County. Okay. So I did that for about two years. Okay. Your term lasts for four. Okay. What does that entail? Yeah, like, I just don't know anything about you're, it. You're, I mean, you're basically, you're kind of like the overall campaign advisor. So that that goes from just getting awareness out for either a candidate or the party as a whole. Mm -hmm. But okay. a big part of it is this administrative stuff. You are going to meetings. You mm -hmm. are signing papers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's real weird whenever you're like appointing someone to a very important job. Yeah. Like, I had to appoint someone to the uh, voting board to okay. make sure we're following all the federal laws and state laws mm -hmm. and all that stuff. I don't know if you've voted down here since, but we moved from precinct voting to voting centers. Okay. I'm not done. I'm not done with the local. I, and I probably, like, I feel like that would be more, like, when you actually think about it, that would be more beneficial than, like, wow. any, I mean, like, for immediate, like, Aid to your own community, yeah. that sort of yeah. thing. Like it's it's important to be involved. I'm yeah, one hundred percent not been involved. Is I should be. Well, and I, you've been kind of disconnected too because you. Yeah, I've been in, I've been a part of two communities. Yeah. I have two yeah. homes. Yeah, like when I think about it, you know. But yeah, it, like it, it ranged from that. I, I pointed that guy. Uh, we had two people pass away that were office holders. Mm -hmm. One was in Mitchell's city council. One was Bedford City Council, and they were Democrats, so I had to hold a caucus in one case where yeah. the, the people that were the precinct committee chairs, they yeah. voted to replace them. Um, the other one, there weren't enough Democratic precinct chairs, yeah. which probably doesn't surprise you in Lawrence County. 
Uh, no, I get that. So, that one I actually had the sole power to appoint, according to the law. Mm. You are the one. I was you the guide, one. You guide others to a treasure that you cannot possess. I guess so. <laughs> but, uh, I, I enjoyed it, I learned a lot, and it, it I'm able to take a lot of that back to the classroom. Yeah, I mean, but, being a government teacher. Yeah. Um, but I quickly realized just how scummy even local politics were. So that's yeah. why I, I resigned. I resigned. I was like, I'm not playing this game anymore. Yeah, that's what it feels stay. like. It's just a big game. It is. It this really is. From what Someone I've... has influence. And usually that influence is money. <clears throat> yeah. And they've either held an office, they've ran for an office, mm -hmm. they've donated a ton of money. Well, I mean, like... They have a time yeah. in, and they expect you to do what they want. And I was that new young guy that wasn't from the community, and they're like, who is this guy telling us what to do? And I'm like, yeah. the law. It's scary to think about the way the world runs. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. like, what powers are at play yeah. out there. Like, how quickly your entire life could be squashed yep. if you were a blip on the government's radar. Yep. That sort of thing. Does that does that frighten you, Josh, at all? Thinking about something like that? Uh, I mean, to an extent, yeah. I mean, pol <laughs> politics in general are just like they just make my head my head hurt because yeah. everybody that's involved in them just has their own agendas, and which I mean that naturally, but like everybody lives within their own biases and. Uh, I, I just am getting kind of sick of the kind of just general feeling of hatred in mm -hmm. our country because it seems like everybody just, and hate's a strong word that I, I don't like to use, but it just feels like everybody's against each other and things are just, I don't know, counter counterproductive, I feel like. Because conversations are had, but no no side is ever listening. So actually, I was just and, talking about this in government uh -huh. today. And it's, it's the polarizing of the two major political parties between the Republicans and Democrats. And when, yeah. you, when you have more and more polarization, they get further away from each other. And that middle ground where, hey, mm -hmm. we can do something with this, mm -hmm. it's, it's lost. Mm -hmm. And that's a, big, that's a huge part of democracy. You yeah. have to compromise. So... That's why nothing's happening there, right now. Yeah, there needs to be concession because it's very much an us versus them. Yes. And people don't realize yeah. that there is no them. It's all us. Yes. Er, and it's all to of the, it is us. It's to the <laughs> point... Sorry, were you talking? I couldn't hear. No, go ahead. Go. Speak. Uh, I just feel like it's to the point where... Like, if it when it comes to voting, I feel like a, a large amount of people are just... You know, if you're Republican, you vote Republican. Like, if you're Democrat, you vote Democrat, and it doesn't matter, like, who the candidate is or if you if you agree with them or not, because, mm -hmm. like, you know, you, li you listen to so much, but <laughs> at the end of the day, you just vote whatever party you, you associate with. And I just feel like that's a dangerous precedent. Some, because... Something that... I, oh, sorry. You no, finish. you're good. You're good. Go um, for it. I think something else is really dangerous about this. That's I think that's really enhancing this feeling in this day and age, is social media and the way that people can subscribe yes. like specifically to echo chambers where it's like, yes. I hear my own opinion over and over yeah. and over again until I think it's the only opinion. And then I see somebody else's opinion that I don't like, and what do I do? I block them. Yeah. I say, I don't want to hear your opinion. And that's dangerous. It is. Yeah, I mean, if you look it's at leaving. Facebook, like, <laughs> news feeds are just full of like, just to uh, well, toxic it help political either. nonsense. That the computers, they they target you. They know. Yeah. Ad companies know what to push your way based on the stuff that you like, or that that Google search that you you oh, yeah. looking at. And that's that's what's making it worse. <clears throat> what was it, Cambridge Analytica? I don't know. Have well, you not heard about that? No. Well, listen, I'm very. I want you to know, I'm very uninvolved. Okay. The world. I'm pretty, Josh, I'm pretty you know, much removed. Do you know about Cambridge Analytica? No, I don't. <laughs> okay, so there's a documentary on Netflix right now. I can't remember what it's called, but it's mm -hmm. about all of this. And they 
took, they, they had an uh, uh, app on Facebook mm -hmm. that one person that you were friends with opened it and that they got access to all of your likes and preferences. Mm. So you can you can build a social like a social profile on what type of voter someone's going to be based on what they like. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And so it pulls all of that. So it's one person, and they could get thousands. And just aggregate all this data. data points. Yeah. So then they know. Okay. Well, they're more likely to vote Republican, or we can maybe sway them mm -hmm. to be a Democrat, and they flood you with that information. Mm. Yeah, that's scary. It's, it's scary to think about, I mean, just like even political advertising and it's, I don't know a solution because it's like the, the solution is just like stop being so in your own head and yes. just be open to something, yep. you know, like get, get out of your own head, think for a minute. And it's like all the hateful, like hateful polarizing language yeah. doesn't help either. Well, and you're behind that screen. Yeah. Like you sit next to them, they you know, they won't say that. It's yes. like when people say like, um, oh, like. These alt right nationalists, or it's like these uh, these Some live tards, yes. you know, something something yeah. something so stupid, yeah. like such a stupid word, um, and use it to identify um, these people. It's like I'm not necessarily right now decreeing which party, like I have allegiance to. I don't believe that it's it's any like concern for something like this podcast, but it's just like. Being able to, not even necessarily what you believe, I'm not telling people what to believe, but just think about the way yeah. you're pushing yourself away from other people by choosing to speak like this. To kind of jump off that, so as Democratic chair of this county, yeah, I voted for a Republican. Okay. So I'm not like... <laughs> you don't, don't have your blinders yeah, on. Don't vote that. Um, that's dangerous. I mean... The moment you start stop thinking, it's dangerous. When you just yeah. blindly, yeah. like, um, I mean, you know, faith is for religion, you know, yes. not politics, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, speaking of which, we've been, we've been talking about a lot of um, world issues, something that um, has been a really big concern in America mm -hmm. recently um, is the issue of guns, namely mass shootings that have been occurring. Um, I don't think there is any dispute that this is a problem. Um, anybody who says not. that it's yeah, anybody who says that it's not a problem has an agenda to push. They um, are out there, right? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I know that it's true that people will say, but it's just if you look at the statistics of um, this epidemic that's been happening recently, this isn't happening anywhere else in the world. Um, and I see, um, I see a lot of people living in fear because of it, that sort of thing. And I want to know, as a teacher. Are you concerned at all about any of the, like when you see these school shootings and there was have you ever been concerned that something like this could happen oh, yeah. around here? I'm not I don't live in fear. Okay. Right? Yeah. But the thought does cross my mind. Yeah. It does. Um It does. Yeah. And, I mean the, my so my brother's a cop. Yeah. Uh and I bought my car recently, so the guy that sold it to me was friends with Mitch back in high school. My brother's name is Mitch. Uh, they hadn't been able to catch up, and so he's like, we're walking out the door after I buy the car, and he's like, hey, Mitch, you be careful. And I looked at him like, I'm a teacher yeah. in 2019, dude, like, I, you should probably say the same thing to me. He's like, don't say that. No. I'm like, dude, that's the life, that, that's <laughs> yeah. the life I live. Like, yeah. it could happen. It could happen. But I don't, I don't <clears throat> live in fear over it. Yeah. I really don't. Do they drill you? On that, do they give you like drills for like oh, yeah. shooter drills? Yeah, the violent intruder as well. Okay. We call them. Um, it's once a month. I mean, do I okay. need to? No, no, no. Okay. You don't have to. I'm just wondering like if, <laughs> if it happens. I think it's pretty common. I think it's actually state law. Um, there was a new law that they made that you have to s have an active shooter. I don't know what that means. I haven't been able to read the language of it. I don't yeah. know if that means like someone comes in with blanks and shoots them in the air. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't oh know if it's just what a drill. We're gonna pretend that there's a person in the building. Like I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't know. Well, that's I think happened in Northern Indiana. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, well, like an actual. They like, took teachers into a room and shot them with pellets, execution style. I've heard of this. I've heard of this. <sighs> no, I've not. This... So. <laughs> what? Yeah. 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 Like. And they weren't aware of this, or they... I think they were told we're going to be running simulations. 
But they didn't get consent. They did not get consent. We're gonna be running simulations. What? What does that mean? Just oh don't worry. About it. Yeah, just don't be, worry. be aware. And think about like just you're probably like kneeling here, thinking about like how you wish you made more money, like pooping your pants in fear, and they're like, surprise! You're prepared if an active yeah. shooter comes in. Well, they and they made like their comeback was when they're like, this is ridiculous. How can you do that? That to teachers. Their comeback was, well, you got to put them in the situation so they know how to how that feels, so they'll know how to respond. And I'm like, I get that, but I I do get that, but like, isn't that taking it a little? Far? Yeah, like you need to at least like shooting them in execution style. Yeah. And like it was like crazy because they would take like five of them at a time into a room, and no one knew what was happening. And then the next five would come in, and the, the former five were gone. So like, yeah, well, that's like, intense. It is. Like, I did not sign up for that. I don't make enough money for that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I just feel oh. like um, I feel like gun violence is such a like daunting and scary problem in the country just yeah. because. There's not that I that I can think of. Like, there's no easy way to solve it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. You're... Like, go ahead. Even even if like drastic measures were taken, and where to the point where there was like a gun ban, it's like mm-hmm. for one, you know, how do you collect all these guns that are yeah. already out? And then beyond that, like. That's only applying to, you know, law abiding citizens. Are, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you can still you would still be able to get a gun. Yeah. And oh, I, I I don't know. I just don't even know how it would begin to like <clears throat> some kind of solution would would come about. It's so it's so sad that like it, it's it's always it's literally the same thing every time this this happens and it's like it is it's upsetting and it's like I don't I'm not in any position to change something like this. Yep. Not that I shouldn't try, like not that I shouldn't, you know, actively believe that it can be changed, but it's like a mass shooting occurs and then there is outrage. Mm-hmm. There's outrage on social media, there's outrage on news outlets of people arguing. You know, it's like one side says we should ban all guns, the other side says second amendment, yep. and then they fight and then yeah, it dies yeah. down. Next and then another shooting. And then it's 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 all over again. And it's like I I like if they try to take all guns, what's gonna happen? There, there are a lot of people out there who are going to defend their right. Oh, yeah. They're going to die for it. Yep. You know? And then you might have a civil war yep. on your hands as far as, like, the look at what this tyrannical government is trying. And then we're just in more turmoil. So it's like, yeah. I don't think that's the Do you have something? Well, I, it goes back to people don't really understand how things work. They see that I have the right to bear arms. But, and I, I'm kind of ignorant of this. Thomas... Jefferson, I think, had like this kind of commentary after the fact that yeah. the Constitution was out there, um, the Bill of Rights too. Yeah. But that, hey, that's not what that really means. What you think it means? And even then, I get it. It's one guy's commentary on what the document says, and you're always going to have that argument. Yeah. But the ultimate thing is your rights. They're not completely like untouchable. Yeah. yeah. They're subject they, to change. I yeah, mean, amendments have all ar- have happened Amendment. already. Like yeah. well, and through even our then, history, like, like you, there are laws for a reason, and it's usually for public safety. So obviously, it makes sense that a lot of states ban like flamethrowers, yeah, like, or RPGs because you don't who, need that exactly, like, and you don't need. People don't need to have that kind of access to that kind of a weapon. Mm-hmm. That's not good for like public, public. safety. Yes. Yeah. But they don't see it that way. They see it as, well, I have the right. That's what that is. I can do whatever I want. Your freedom of speech isn't completely unlimited. Like mm-hmm. there are limits to rights. Yeah. And they can change. And like you said, the amendment process. Mm-hmm. I think it's just it's um it's such a touchy subject too, because a lot of people I mean like that is like, like the revolution, you know, like yeah. the revolutionary war. Like yeah. this is what, and I think a lot of it too is different nowadays because you think about if civilians went up against the United States military, the civilians are gonna lose. Yeah. You know, and it's like um, if they're in, you know, if they're any, yeah, like they wouldn't even have to leave their house. Like yeah. they just sit at the Some Pentagon, joystick. You know, they just and it's over. 
And it's like, and I, I hate to burst all the, the bubbles for any fanatics out there. Like, I, I get it. You know, you want to be able to defend that right. You want to be like the revolutionary farmers. I get it. But I just don't, like, it's, it's a right that I think people have. But, like, the, the way I see it, the, the way that I've thought about this before, is if there were an all-out ban on guns. Yeah. You know, if the government said, I'm going to take away all weapons. And they knocked at my door. Like, mm -hmm. six military personnel knocked at my door. And they all have assault rifles. And they said, give us your guns. It is an egregious violation of my rights. But I'm not going to die for it. Yeah. Like, I'll hand them over. That might be the first step to uh, total not, military takeover. Not everybody has that mindset, though. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Probably. Yeah. I bet we'll, we'll probably find some people who comment on this that don't have that mindset. And I get it. Yeah. But I won't. I won't. You know? And maybe that's the first step to complacency with. <clears throat> it's just what you it's what you earnestly believe I guess um, it's a tough subject it, it, it really is um, because you're gonna rub a lot of people the wrong way with it yep. um, I'm sure there are already some people who are practicing recreational outrage like I can't believe he just said that. well and again going back a good example that I always use in class with like freedom of speech yes it is your right and you can say whatever you want within certain limits. So yeah. the Westboro Baptist Church, for example, mm. if you don't know, does mm -hmm. anyone, you know? Yeah, okay. yeah. So they, they protest soldiers that have died mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. during duty. And, you know, they're saying horrible things. I mean, and I always ask students, is it appropriate or respectful to the families of those soldiers to have these people mm -hmm. standing out there with these signs yeah <clears throat> like, would you be okay with that with them standing right there next to mm -hmm. the morning family screaming and yelling mm -hmm. as they're trying to lower the body into the ground there is yeah. um i uh, a... oh, sorry blake uh oh. real quick it's kind of related but um they pride month is june right yeah yes so um during pride month in knoxville there was a like pride parade um through like downtown and i just coincidentally like elijah was visiting me blake and yeah. we decided to go see a movie and we were just we just happened to be there like while it was going on like we didn't know it was happening but like, yeah. it was going on and we're like cool like it's a cool thing um and i'm walking down the street and on two different occasions there was there was like people just standing like with megaphones like protesting and like damning all of these people like mm -hmm. and like, <clears throat> i i just i don't see how anybody thinks that kind of thing is beneficial or helpful mm -hmm. you know what i mean like so, you don't listen to people that are screaming at mm -hmm. you like there there is a time and a place like a law like, I mean, there's yeah. like literally like for this sort of thing, it's like, it's regulated in the sense of like, these people have to, like, as far as like the Westboro Baptist Church goes, like a lot of these protests, they get really, like, and I'm not saying that they're not awful yeah. because I mean, they're truly despicable yeah. dudes, but most of them actually have to take place fairly far away from the funeral site. Like, that is the limitation to yeah, the freedom of speech. Like the, the there is a limitation yeah. to it. However, it's like all of these things I do, I do support the right to like, Speak as you wish. Yeah. The repercussions of such a thing, I mean, that's on you. Like, if you decide yeah. to do these things and somebody comes up and just pops you in the chops and knocks you out, like, that is illegal. Like, technically, he's the one in the wrong, but it's like, did yeah. you deserve it? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> that sort punching of thing. Punching Nazis or whatever. Yeah, punching <laughs> Nazis, that sort of thing. Um, sounds like fun. <clears throat> do your duty, punch a Nazi. <laughs> I teach a Holocaust class now. I, I, I don't really? Know that or not. Okay. I saw I that. Of that. I, I love it. Kids call it the Holocaust, which I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Wait, wait, what? Because it's it's a hard class, is what they say. <laughs> because it's reading and writing. No, I get that, but the the Holocaust. Holocaust. Yeah, I feel like that is a bad thing. Huh? Yeah, not a good not a good name for it. But anyway, <laughs> um, where was I going with that? Oh, punching <laughs> Nazis. Yeah. Uh, so a kid asked me today. He's like going back to how the media labels people. Yeah. Right. That. Is it okay to start calling anyone that disagrees with you that is slightly conservative? Do you, yeah, call them a neo-Nazi? And I'm like, well, if 
they're truly a Nazi. I feel like we need to call them a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like I they're not like don't like just voracious. And that's, that's, like, that's why words are important, and yeah. we need to use them more. Yeah, responsibly. But anyway. yeah, people people um, use use a lot of words that I don't think they necessarily understand, or they use they use damning language. Yeah, yeah. strong words are just thrown around. Yeah, all the time. I mean, just look at a Facebook feed. Right now, just go on there, and I'm probably I'm I can almost guarantee that you'll see somebody who's posting about that. And I get it; it gets your attention. It is um, like that is. I mean, honestly, there's I've been reading. Um, uh, well, I started reading this book called The Dictator's Handbook, and it's about like politics and why controversy is so um, important to politics. And it's like it's not the person who's right that gets the attention, it's yeah. the person who screams loudest. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Like, those people that you were talking about, they're not getting their message across the way that they'd like to, but they yeah. do get your attention. You do hear their message. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they yeah. are being heard. But <clears throat> yeah. And I'm not saying that it's that. right, but it's like, that is how you you get, like, if you're, if you're clever at it, that's not how you do it. Oh, yeah. You do it in the sense of, like, organized politics, where you actively undermine these people. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're really good at playing the game, you're probably a bad person. <laughs> I mean, true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like it means you're you're greasing the right palms. You're you're talking to the right people. But again, the right endorsements. Cambridge Analytica. Yeah. Look, you need to look into the like. It's, it'll blow your mind. Yeah. You'll be terrified. I'm. I already am. I live okay. in constant yeah. fear. <laughs> um. Do you have anything to add to that, oh Joshy boy? No, nothing. Or, nothing to add. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I think we're we're winding up to a close. I wanna I wanna throw um, one last thing out there. Um, this is something that I do think um, is important. It's it's a social issue, um, but it's it is it's very serious, but it's not as serious as gun violence. I mean, social media. It's a social media issue. Um, I personally have found that I'm just very addicted to. Oh yeah. And I think everybody. Yeah. Like yeah. unless you're like really actively not yep. like more often than not almost every person you meet is in some way shape or form addicted yes. to it do you think it's from the um from the classes that you've taught from like beginning up until now do you think it's changing people yes how how so we've you mentioned that people get in their bubble and they only see what they want to see and you very easily can say block and follow whatever it is it, it changes people and that that human to human face to face it's not there yeah and you know I've had family members that have not said mean things but they've said things and I'm like no that's wrong and let me let me try to put this out there in an academic way and they don't respond well they really don't yeah so yeah. <clears throat> and even in person, one of them, like, I, we just don't talk to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It happens. It does. But, <clears throat> and you see kids today, and I hate to be that old person that's like, kids today, but there is a change. You're, I mean, you're, like, you're old enough now that you're like, I, even I sort of see it. I'm, yeah. Like, I'm, we're younger than you are in the sense of like, I start to see the disconnect that I yeah. feel from like the youth, like I feel like a lot of kids probably see you and they think that they like really relate to you, but they probably don't. Well, <laughs> yes and no. And like I, so, I, in some ways. Yeah. You know. And I try. I do. I'm not like that hip old dude that's like, oh kids, let's do this thing. <laughs> but, like, <clears throat> I try to relate to him, but at the same time, I'm able to see that even from when you guys graduated four years ago, there's a difference in how kids interact. Like yeah. Kids don't just sit and talk to each other hardly anymore. They yeah. immediately pull out their phone yeah. when they're not doing anything and they flip through Facebook or Snapchat mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And if they're talking, it's usually like, hey, look what yeah. I found. Well, when even mm-hmm. is the last time that, well, Josh, I know the last time you did this. I feel like you and I do this a lot. When's the last time you did something like this where you just sat and talked for an hour? I mean, like, just sat down and, like, uh, just a conversation. Like, you don't really get the opportunity to dig deep. Well, I mean, often. Like, I kind of just hang out with people. That's fair. At, yeah. At school, like, we have a student teacher. Okay. Yeah. And I sat down in lunch period and talked to him. Okay. But I mean, was it? 
this kind of stuff. Yeah, no, like I get like, this is this is a different yeah. this is a different context, but like I yeah. feel like a lot of people, um, <clears throat> not necessarily a lot of people, but sometimes we'll have uh, guests on that it's like this is the first time that they've done this yeah. in quite some like where you actually just sit down and engage yeah. in yeah. in like actual thoughtful conversation as far as like talking about yeah. issues and more so than just like I really am not a fan of like small talk. Like, no, if I I'm gonna, yeah, if I'm going to talk to somebody, it's like, I just, either talk to me or don't. Yeah. It's like, it has some yeah. Like, yeah. Small, po- s- small talk is not, it, it, it's pointless. Like, there's no reason to do it. Like, I, I appreciate the, like, you know, the... The gesture. Yeah, right? the gesture and, like, pleasantries of, like, how are you? Like, what's new? That kind of stuff. But... If care. that if that goes beyond, like, three messages, it's like, okay, like, I can't do this anymore. Like, yeah. there's no substance here. Mm-hmm. I feel like how are you in, like, texts is, like, a, an opener for, like, more. It's yeah. almost like yeah. a, an opener for you tell me what to talk about <laughs> next. People of our age yeah. do that, though. Like, I just send a text. Like, I'm like, hey, how's it going? Or what's up? I'm yeah. just like, oh, hey, look, I found this video. You need to watch it. Yeah, like, typically, <laughs> it, like, I don't normally text without a point. Sometimes yeah. it follows up, like, if somebody messages me. And they're like, hey, I need this, or hey, like, talking about something, then it's a follow-up. Like, oh, by the way, how are you? It's like, oh, yeah. we don't need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, if you or, really um, want to do this, let's uh, let's talk on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I hate talking on the phone, though. <clears throat> I yeah. love it. <laughs> but I'm it, weird, it depends I on... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those people that I, like, I can't just sit and talk. Like, I'm walking oh, around. Oh, no, I need to... Um, it's like, I pretty much... If somebody calls me, and I know it's just a chat... I'll only answer if I'm driving or if I'm about to go to bed. Because it's like, I got nothing else going on. It's yeah. like, if I'm at home and somebody calls me and I'm doing something, it's like, I just can't, I can't afford an hour. But like, see, like, it's, like, I'll sit there and just be watching YouTube videos or something, doing nothing. And you're like, I want to keep doing this. So then when someone <laughs> calls me, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get up and do the dishes and do the laundry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I'm one of those people. No, I get that. I keep conclu- talking, I don't care. Yeah, no, in con- I mean, in conclusion, like, so- <sighs> social media is just, it's a, it's a really strange subject because I think it's it's also changing people's perception of, like, what is valued and yeah. like, what yeah. what yeah. reality is, yeah. even. Like, especially for kids. Yeah. Like, uh... They want to be kids. YouTubers. They want, they want yeah. views. They want... Yeah. Speaking of, <laughs> like this video. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> that bell. Smash that bell. <laughs> I feel like it was never, like, even when we were doing this, Josh, I don't know if that was ever even, like, our intention, like, our goal was, like, at the end, like, we're going to be YouTubers. Like, it started, we just wanted to make videos. Yeah. You know? And, like, now it's, like, this is, oh, I hate the term influencer. Yeah. People throw that around, like, influencer, people who, like, get a lot of followers. And that's, like, the malicious, I feel like it's this horrible, like, this bad word. Yeah. Because if you think about it, they are influencers. They have the ability to reach people based on numbers and possibly shape an opinion because of their own. Yeah. Just, and, like, people have been doing that naturally well, yeah. for, forever. Yeah. So it's like putting a name to it and, like, making it, like, this brand or, like, yeah. self-proclaim. Oh, that's what that's what I... Like, when people are... Um, there's It just shows no humility yeah. in oneself. Yeah. When, it's like... I've been seeing a lot of people like reaching out um, like to brands like hey I'm an influencer yep. if you send me some products I'll promote them it's yep. like what gives you the right yep you like if, if you really like it okay that's one thing <laughs> like if it's this thing that you use every day yeah okay but just trying to get the money so yeah. you don't actually like it and you try to sell it that this is the greatest thing ever that's just that's no, it's scary. like when there's it's like when there's an ad on TV where like a person in a lab coat is telling you something, yes. and at the bottom there's an asterisk, and it says "not a doctor." Not a real doctor. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Advertising is deceptive, and it permeates it. That's something else that's scary. I don't know if if you've ever seen this before. They have like the Wendy's Twitter account. Yes. That's like I love that, it. like roast people. Yeah. Like it, I so. I really enjoyed it, and then I read like I read like a three-page psychoanalysis of like Wendy's like of that Twitter, and it's like it's like don't be fooled. Pretty much is like what this really? was about, and I read into it's it. Conspiracy and, theory. Well, it's like basically it's like think about this. It's like think about how corporations are evolving. Yeah. Wendy's 
a fast food restaurant, somebody like their social media head has evolved to the point they understand people to where they're, they're not even tweets. yeah they're not even they're not even like advertising like their food they're just yeah. becoming a brand name yeah. by like acting like a person and how scary is that That's, like yeah. the brand is like it's not fast food it's like pretending to be a savage <laughs> basically and it's so it's frightening it is yeah like That's to think about what it is it's like oh man Wendy's just roasting well, this no. person. GameStop. I don't know if you know this stuff about GameStop or not. But they're like laying off major numbers of people. No, I didn't know that. Because then their stock plummeted. Ooh. May not be around for that much longer, but uh, we'll see if they can survive. But anyway, their Twitter guy actually tweeted out, "Hey, I'm just the guy that runs Twitter. Quit sending me hate messages or something like that." Yeah. So I. Hey, I'm just. The I guy really. That runs I, Twitter. There, a part of me is like. There is a real human being that's just mm -hmm. being funny. Yeah, yeah, I really hope that. Mm -hmm. I really hope that. But, but as somebody who has sat through on a small scale something like this, yeah. I um, I sat through meetings about social media and like for the organization that I used to work for, and it's like it's at least where I work is like predetermined. Oh, it's okay. like they, yeah. you know, it's like and it's like not one person. It's like several. They like write out these things, so it's like it's just hard for me to, I guess identify with it that way and it's like and it's hard too because it is funny like yeah. i see it i'm like like they know what they're doing but like it almost feels like this urge to be like be gone brand yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know mm. we we've discussed a lot of things um and we're we're a little over on time but i think i think that's okay do you have any thoughts before we close josh if not i can i can land this plane um no no closing thoughts no closing land thoughts. away all right. Well, I'll take the controls here. It seems one of our engines has caught fire. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Matt. It yeah. has been a pleasure. Um, this is the first time I've seen you, like, probably since... I think I came back to the B&L yeah. once. Yeah, I ran right into you somewhere else, I think. So. Yeah. Well, hey, it's yeah. been a pleasure. Thank you so much. This has been Destination Unknown. If you like this episode, please go like and subscribe and feed more into our brand. Uh, there's supposed to be more to that. Goodbye! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!